Here. 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 Toman. Here. Gail. Here. Guzikowski. Here. Pledge of allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, item three is the approval of the minutes of August 16th and August 23rd, 2016. Need a motion. Uh, Pukiewicz will make a motion to approve the minutes of 8-16-16 and 8-23-16 as listed. Halen, second. Halen, second's roll call. Alderman Pukiewicz. Aye. Bray Halen. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Before I cast, I was not here for the 23rd, so I can say yes to one, but abstain from the other, from the 23rd. However you want to do that. Rest, abstain from all of them. Okay, yeah, I'll abstain. All right, Alder Krakowski abstains due to an absence from one of the two meetings. Um, under recognition, I, it's a consideration of resolution number 11732-090616 to say resolution of appreciation to John H. Finko, retiring police officer. I was at that um, ceremony last Thursday. Um, tremendous career, well-respected, uh, not only by the department, uh, some of the testimonials from his fellow officers were amazing. Um, one of the things I, that I got from it was um, John, Officer Finkel, did the jobs that other officers didn't want to do. And that's somebody that really steps up for the team. And uh, if there's anything about, I know about the Oak Creek Police Department, they are a team. But, but also just the, the number of people that attended the event was one of the highest I'd ever seen, including ex-chief and some of the other somewhat famous retirees from Oak Creek Police Department. So it was a great day uh, celebrating a great career, and I, I wish John nothing but the best in his retirement. He, like most retirees, he probably still do something related, but um, at least for his official career, he's retiring from Oak Creek Police Department. So I wish him luck. Need a uh, motion and a, and a second. And let's read it. Let's read it. Do we, can you have it? Let me read it. All right, resolution number 11732-090616. Whereas John Finko began his employment with the city of Oak Creek on August 3rd, 1992 as a full-time police officer, and whereas John Finko has been a valuable employee during his years of dedicated service with the Oak Creek Police Department, always striving to enhance the quality of life for the citizens of the city, and whereas during his 24 years and one month of service, John Finko has been an integral part, integral part of the police department, serving as a patrol officer on various shifts throughout his career, and whereas John Finko received numerous recognitions for his action as a police officer, including but not limited to a Distinguished Service Medal in 2006, and numerous recognitions for his actions on August 5, 2012, at the Sikh Temple shooting, which included a Medal of Valor and Life Saving Award, as well as being recognized nationally in Washington as a top cop, top cop for the country. And whereas during his tenure with the Oak Creek Police Department, John Finko was crucial in the area of radar instruction, training many officers as a field training officer, as well as being a dedicated member of the Honor Guard Unit, being assigned as a court liaison officer, and being a member of the Chaplain Committee. And whereas John Finko served as a DARE officer and school resource officer with the middle schools in the Oak Creek Franken School District for over three years, and whereas John Finko is retiring from the Oak Creek Police Department force after completing 24 years and one month of full-time service to the city of Oak Creek, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Common Council of the City of Oak Creek for and on behalf of the citizens of the City of Oak Creek that sincere gratitude and appreciation be extended to John Finkel for his years of professional, dedicated, and faithful service to the City of Oak Creek and the Police Department, and that the best wishes for good health and happiness be extended to John Finkel and his family for future years. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of this meeting, and that the City Clerk is hereby directed to transmit a suitable copy thereof to John Finkel, which we have... Pass and adopt is the sixth day of September 2016. Motion. Bill move to approve <coughs> resolution 11732-090616, a resolution of appreciation to John H. Finko, retiring police officer. Council second. Who's calls seconds roll call? Alderman Bikavich. Aye. Bray Halen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Zukowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Under public hearings, item five is a general DTS MUPDD, general development plan regulating plan amendment. Uh, I'll let um, Doug read through the details after the city clerk reads the uh, public hearing notice. Public hearing number one is to consider amendments to the general development plan and regulating plan for the Drexel Town Square mixed use plan development district to allow, to allow a drive through drive up facility for the B5 building in the mixed use sub district Block B as a conditional use. 
and to allow drive-through, drive-up facilities for financial institutions, drugstores, pharmacies, and restaurants as conditional uses in the mixed-use subdistrict for buildings B5, B1, B2, B1, and C2 are located at 7940 South 6th Street, 7901 South Main Street, and 7902 South Main Street. The applicant is Blair Williams, Wired Properties, 1 West Drexel, LLC, and the City of Oak Creek. Property owner, 1 West Drexel, LLC. There follows the legal description. Date of notice, August 11, 2016. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Doug Seymour. I am the Director of Community Development for the City of Oak Creek. And this is a public hearing and a request to amend the uh, Ordinance 2820, which is really the regulating plan and document that, that regulates the land use and activities at, at Drexel Town Square. It's called the Drexel Town Square Mixed Use Plan Development District and uh, it covers uh, all the addresses uh, that we mentioned, which are part of Drexel Town Square. So, Wired Properties is requesting amendments to this uh, Mixed Use Plan Development District General Development Plan and reg Regulating Plan. And specifically, what they're asking to is for the council to consider allowing drive through or drive up windows as conditional uses for their proposed B5 multi tenant retail building. This building is located uh, in the mixed use subdistrict at the southeast corner of 6th and Drexel. You can see a site plan that was conditionally approved by the plan commission for that site, uh, conditional, of course, <coughs> upon the Common Council issuance of the amendment to the code and the granting of a conditional use permit for that, that drive through, drive up window. Uh, typically, the uh, DTS MUPD prescribed locations for drive throughs and drive ups and limited them to a certain degree in the mixed use subdistrict. We did allow for several of them in the perimeter commercial uh, subdistrict, which is more of the traditional retail that you see on the east side of the, the property. But we tried to limit those, especially uh, when you consider drive throughs within the context of the uh, quick service restaurants, for example. Uh, on the east side of the property or in the mixed use areas. And the, this proposal is to permit or actually to allow for the consideration of drive through or drive up windows for financial institutions or, or drug stores or things of that nature. Not typically the things that you see, the multiple drive through lanes, the long stacking distances, the speaker boxes, the, you know, the menu boards, those things that you generally would associate with a quick, quick service restaurant. So this is much more limited and focused on those types of of activities that are more geared towards financial institutions, drugstores, things of that nature. Uh, what you see before you this evening is, again, the site plan, which uh, illustrates the, the approved or conditionally approved plan. Uh, I'll show you a rendering of the, the property, which uh, you can see. Uh, this is a view from the intersection of 6th and Drexel. And you can see, I know that, uh, I apologize, you guys can't see this up at the Council table, but you can see that the drive, this would be 6th Street, that would be the drive up window that we're talking about here. Uh, you can see it's not anything that's got the, the big signs attached to it, it's just uh, some place where you can transact your business at this as yet unnamed financial institution. So that is the first public hearing this evening is to change the text of that DTS MUPD to allow for these types of uses as conditional uses in the district. The second public hearing, which we'll get to uh, subsequent, would allow, actually issue a conditional use permit for this specific building. So this is a public hearing, and I would request that anyone who has any questions or comments regarding the proposal to amend the Drexel Town Square Mixed Use Plan Development District uh, to fill out a, uh, a form, an appearance form, hand that over to the city clerk, and once your name is called, uh, proceed to the microphone and give your name and address and proceed to address your comments. And our questions to the Common Council, this public hearing is now open. We'll make three calls for public comment on this item. First call. Second call. Third and final call for public comment on item number five. Seeing no one coming forward, we'll close the public hearing, move on to discussion of, of the ordinance, which is item number six. It's ordinance number 2820. It would amend the general development plan and re regulating plan for the Drexel Town Square Mixed Use Plan Development District at 7940 South 6th Street, 7901 South Main Street, and 7902 South Main Street, and these are in the second district. I'll open it up to the council for questions or comments. Just one question. Alderman Vrahaler. Um, <clears throat> with the, uh, the, the uh, uh, 
drive up usage. Um, my question is, it, no matter what building it would happen to be in, uh, whether it's in B1, B2, B5, C1, or C2, um, say we uh, uh, let a, a banking institution go in, um, say the banking institution leaves after three years, does that drive up requirement remain no matter what comes in there? Say if a fast food restaurant would come in there, or do we have to come back for another conditional use? The conditional use would run with the property unless revoked. So in the fact that you would, the council may be considering a conditional use permit uh, for, for instance, a financial institution. I mean, if the presumed next tenant were to want to utilize that different in a different fashion, I mean, they'd have to come back to the plan commission and potentially the common council for amendments. If they wanted to use it exactly the way that uh, the, the bank was using and not make any modifications, uh, like adding, you know, the menu boards and the lights and the speakers, I mean, they certainly could But in that. all essence, the, the, the conditional use would remain. The conditional but use you'd would have remain, to, yes. But you'd have to amend it to, like you said, put up a uh, ordering board or whatever. Right, but because, no, because no the matter plans what, would have already been No approved. matter what, that once, that once that building is approved for that drive up, it's always going to have a drive up. The use is, stays with the property, yes. Uh, Alderman Kurkowski. It seems like you, in your language the, in your language tonight, you were kind of leaning towards financial institution. Uh, maybe you were just using that as an example, but it seems to be what you were leaning towards that potentially what it we used for. Um, uh, let's see. Chick-fil-A has a drive up. Myers has a drive up. Um, I know the, the old Sonic, soon to be Burger King, is not in the, in the area, but that has a drive up, as does uh, Panda Express. It's not in the, it's not in the, in the uh, TIF area or the development area. But one of the, one of the common, and, and even the U.S. Bank, which is supposed to be, is going to have a drive up facility. Um, one of the, just food for thought, one of the things that I hear quite often with regards to development in that area and along Howell is, OG, another bank, just what we need. Um, so I just want to share that with you because the drive up facility for either a potential financial institution or subsequent drive up food facility doesn't exactly excite me very much. And, and that's understandable. And, and certainly the, the whole goal of, of Drexel Town Square is to provide a, a mix of different uses that. Uh, Includes financial institutions at a certain degree, and I understand that we do have a lot of them in this city. Uh, they still are valued tenants and property owners, uh, and are actually very good tenants and property owners with respect to typically the, the buildings that they keep and that uh, the services they provide. They're not necessarily very intensive use, and that's important. And it's kind of balancing out some <clears throat> of the more intensive uses, some of the more intensive restaurant uses that we see happening in that quadrant. So I certainly can understand that uh, there would be some. Maybe not a, uh, a lot of uh, you know strong support for a financial institution. I think that uh, the the fact that we are seeing uh, continued strong interest from these institutions is a, a certainly an indicator that Oak Creek and not only Drexel Town Square but Oak Creek is a very strong market for them, and, and they want a piece of that market. So, you know, we'll we'll take the planning commission is taking steps to make sure that. The, the architecture of the building uh, uh, with respect to the drive through uh, really minimizes the impact. I mean, this is not going to be like U.S. Bank. It's going to be just a small drive-up window. Uh, it's uh, one lane. Uh, so, well, I can understand, again, the fact that, I mean, some people may not get, get terribly excited about another bank. I mean, it is uh, a proper part of the mix that we're trying to create at Drexel Town Square. We'll just say... Big cities have a lot of banks, and there's a reason for that because there's a lot of capital, there's a lot of business, a lot of retailers and restaurants that require cash that people need to go to the ATM or, or to go to the window to get cash for. So ultimately, the market decides what goes into most developments, and this is a case where the popularity of Drexel Town Square is not um, immune for the, maybe that's not the right word, it's not something that scares away banks, obviously. There's plenty of banks in Oak Creek. Here's another one that wants to be here. For their customers, and I don't know that it, we, we know who that bank's going to be, but for their customers, this is probably the best news available because it ha gives them easy access to, to their funds right on site. So for those people, they'll be very happy about it. Alderman McGill. Uh, Doug, just to clarify for me, because I'm a part of Planning Commission, the, um, this particular proposal to amend this to uh, 
make this conditional use of all five of these buildings effectively allows that it not just the building that's depicted on this graphic doesn't allow it allows the discretion for the council to issue a conditional okay. use permit for them and then um, the conditional use that allows council one more kick at the cat or is that a planning commission level decision? Oh, that comes that's a public hearing uh, event that comes before the common council so no matter what if one was proposed at one of these buildings at a site common council gets another Absolutely. step yes. at it and now i see on, you know, on the on the graphic that's here doug we only show one on the end of the building technically any tenant on that building and any tenant uh, on one, any one per building one per building yes is there, okay all right thanks and of, of the plans for the the buildings uh, under Blair Williams, this is the only one that's requested a drive through, drive up, I should say. Other questions or comments? Alderman, Alderman uh, Guzikowski, then Alderman Gavich. Uh, just to touch on what we had talked about at Planning Commission, I, I, I do agree with you. Alderman Kurkowski definitely is not the sexiest pick for her, for Drexel Town Square, but the other part of the equation is, you know, what, what the mayor had just mentioned about the banks, you know, they're if they're buying in, it's, it seems like um, there are too many banks in the area, but they're coming for a reason. So I'm just hoping the balance is there and we have the right mix. So I was I was on the fence, um, but then when I saw that um, the size of it and, and the use of it, um, I was a little more comfortable with it. So. You know, you know, we, we can also, you know, we, we kind of forget about the other things that are coming in that we haven't talked about, frankly, because they're not controversial. Women's clothing store, performance running outfitters, you know, dent a dental place, uh, a women's spa, which is very popular. So it's balanced out by a lot of different things. It's a great mix at Drexel Town Square. It will be even more so when the next phase happens. So it's part of that mix. Jerry? Just, just one Hold point. on one second. Um, Let me go to Alden McCabe, and I'll go to you. Um, I'm just going to chime in because the, the planning commission kind of went long and hard on this one with the drive through to tell you the truth because it included all the buildings and if you really look at the layout of the other buildings they're not conducive to really having a drive through in them so the only real possibility in my opinion being a member of that commission is probably going to happen in this new drive through uh, i disagree with some of the aldermen here i actually think the bank is a very good pick i think good health for the city as the mayor mentioned uh, it's showing that there's commerce here opportunity and the banks go where opportunity and where money is and obviously Drexel's generating that excitement uh, not only that for this b5 building this actually can be considered an anchor town because they're not coming here banks typically do their research and don't fold up and go out of business uh, unlike a restaurant or anything like that so I feel very comfortable with what we're doing. The way this drive-through is also designed, it really minimizes anything. It's pretty well hidden. It'll be screened to Drexel Avenue. Uh, but <coughs> wrapping around the building, we worked out the deliveries with the other tenants, uh, things of that nature. And again, in the evening when it's not being used, the money could be used to go in to service those other four <coughs> customers. So I, um, I'm totally on board with this one. Again, for each building, they'd have to come in separately. We'd have to look at what's going on. But obviously, on the corner with B1 and 2, there's no way you're going to see drive through in any one of those buildings. The administrator. And the point that I want to make um, is more the strength of the, the market and the project. When we originally negotiated B1, B2, C1, C2 um, projects with wire development, they had the options but not the obligations. Uh, to continue to move forward on the project they felt comfortable enough in the strength of the market that they've exercised those options and you know the bottom line is you've got these uses in front of you tonight you know and i think there's there is that discussion about whether that's the best use appropriate use or mixed use and i think in the end uh, generally the market will make those decisions as long as you have the right buildings and the quality of the buildings I think the uses will, over time, sort themselves out, and uh, we'll have a good mix out there in the market. We'll figure that out. may not get it in the first round. It may be uh, one or two generations, but I think as long as we have the quality buildings, and I think we do, I think eventually those uses will, will, will sort out to what they need to be. Uh, uh, thank you. Just kind of a, a final note. I mean, <clears throat> uh, and we just touched briefly upon it uh, previously, but it's really very important to get the right tenant mix in here. You can't have, you know, five restaurants that all have peak times at the same time. 
for parking and what have you. So I think that the addition of a financial institution, which has different peaks, certainly, and certainly different parking generators based on, uh, for instance, Bel Air, uh, is a critical critical element of really making sure that all of these different tenant spaces function uh, together. So we don't have don't you know, overload the, the parking situation there. That we make use of the parking assets that we have without having to overbuild that parking. You know, no doubt it'll be a culture change on the parking because as in as a longtime Oak Creek person, we're used to just pulling up in front of a business, parking and getting out and doing our job. This is different. You'll have to, in some cases on busy Friday, Saturday, whatever, you'll have to find a place and it'll involve walking around a little bit. And frankly, that's good because you'll be doing more walking and be healthier and that plays into the mayor's fitness challenge. So, <laughs> so although you're going to eat an unhealthy dinner after you walk around, so... So, yeah, I understand the concerns on the banks. I, I hear the same thing. Um, I've, you know, been around long enough to hear why do we have so many banks. And, you know, again, I, I, with what the, everyone else has said, it's an indica indication of the strength of the city that people want to invest in it, capitalize, capitalize it. Anybody else? Motion on six. David shall make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2820, amending the general development plan and regula regulating plan for Drexel Town Square mixed use plan development district at 7940 South 6th Street, 7901 South Main Street, 7902 South Main Street. Mr. Kelsgale, second. Roll call. Alderman Verhalen. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. No. Bikavich. Aye. And item seven is a conditional use request by Blair Williams of Wired Properties for a conditional use permit for a financial institution with drive-through, drive-up facility in the B5 building on the property at 7940 South 6th Street in the 2nd District, and the city clerk will read that public hearing notice. Public hearing number two. Hearing is to consider a request by Blair Williams Wired Properties for a conditional use permit for a financial institution with drive-through, drive-up facility in the B5 building on the property at 7940 South 6th Street. Applicant is Blair Williams, Wired Properties. Property owner, 1 West Drexel, LLC. There follows the legal description. Date of notice, August 11, 2016. Thank you. And, and very briefly, because we really talked about the, the nuts and bolts of this uh, during the first public hearing, but this is actually the actual issuance of the conditional use permit, which would allow... Which would allow the drive-in, drive-through as part of that financial institution in the B5 building. All right, nothing else? Nothing else. Uh, just uh, if anyone has any questions or comments regarding that, please fill out an appearance form, and when instructed to do so by the city clerk, approach the microphone, give your name and address, and proceed to address your comments or questions. The Common Council, this public hearing is now open. First call for public comment on item number seven. Second call. And third and final call for public comment on the request by Blair Williams of Wired Properties for a conditional use permit for a financial institution with drive through driver facility in the B5 building on the property at 7940 South 6th Street. No one's coming forward. We'll close the public hearing at this time and move on to the discussion of item 8, which is a consideration of the ordinance number 2821, approving a conditional use permit for allowing a financial institution with a drive through drive up facility located at 7940 South 6th Street in the center. Open up for questions or comments. Pretty straightforward. Seeing no comments, no hands raised. Need a motion. David shall make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2821, approving a conditional use permit allowing a financial institution with a drive through drive up facility located at 7940 South 6th Street. Busy calls Gail second. Roll call. Alderman Toman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Nope. Kavich? Aye. Verhalen? Aye. All right, moving to old business. Item 9 is a consideration of resolution number 11731-090616, approving the contract to administer the retail food and recreational programs for the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection. This item was held on August 16th. And Ann is here to answer any questions that we may have. Or do you have any comments to start us off? Um, not at this time. Okay. Questions on item 9? One, one question. Alderman Verhalen? Um, I noticed in the, the payout to the state, are they at 10% currently? They are at 10%. They are at 10%. Um, what's, what are the chances of them bumping it up to the 
I think it will be coming at some point. However, they said that it would be within, um, we'd have a year before right. they would. Well, the reason I ask is because it, it looks like with having a sanitarian, it's kind of a push for the city. It's kind of a no cost thing because you're getting enough in fees in a, to take care of the employee that's going to. But I just wondered um, what scenario it takes on when we get to the 20% point. Um, I, what I would say is recommend is that the fees would reflect that then. All right. That, that isn't regulated by the state. We're allowed to charge our own fees for certain things. I yes. noticed that in the paperwork too. We are allowed to charge whatever we need to to okay. support the program. Right. All right. Okay. Anybody yep. else? Motion on nine. Hmm. Rakowski will make a motion to adopt resolution number 11731-0906166. Uh, Approving the contract to administer the retail food and recreational programs through the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection. <clears throat> Guzikowski, I'll second. You heard Guzikowski seconds. Roll call. Alderman Gale? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Bikavich? Aye. Brahalen? Aye. Tillman? Aye. And on to new business. Item 10 is a discussion of, and brainstorming for the preparation of the 2017 City of Oak Creek budget. City Finance Director Bridget is here. Hello. Um, the mayor and I spoke two weeks ago about trying to get the council together prior to the budget process. Um, normally we have our comments at the end of the budget process and we're trying to sit down with the council and really look at potential funding options, changes in services that you might wish to see if we can do some type of workshop prior to actually developing the concrete numbers of the budget, that might be a little more efficient than we have done it in the past. So in the memo here, um, we've provided a few date and time options, and I was hoping to get some sort of a consensus. Yeah, and, I, and we did talk, and I think I agree with you that this is a um, kind of way just kick some ideas around before the more formal budget um, meeting starts this would be also an open session correct in this chamber um, but really just uh, you know brainstorming some good ideas um, some thoughts about the direction of the city where we need to go uh, for 2017 so um, any thoughts on the dates times that uh, we're looking at just one meeting there or I think so you know, right now because yes, typically the budget be. meeting is a pretty healthy meeting so I'm thinking what did you allocate, two or three hours? I, I think we had three-hour increments. We would still have our session, like our Saturday morning session, later on in October, like we normally would have, but that's when I have something to present you. This one, I wouldn't have anything to present you except let's kind of shoot out ideas of what you all are looking to be short-term, long-term, and then how I can make that happen, <laughs> if I can make that happen. Initially, September 24th is the City Shred Day event, so there'll be, some of us will be not available for that. The only date that really works right now clear for me is the 28th, and if I had to, I can probably is that swing something on the Evening of the 28th? <coughs> That's a Wednesday, yes. Evening of the 28th, correct? What the hours? Five to eight. All right. Yeah, I'm in... Boston, I get back from Boston that morning, so that would work for me. Uh, the only bad date for me would be September 17th. The other four work for me. I'm also out of town on the 17th. We have consensus on that Wednesday night. 28th. 28th. I could make that. Good. Okay. Oh, oh. Right, I'm looking at how early? Um, you said five, right? Five to eight. Yeah. Or five until you're done talking. Yeah, it could be less, could be. <laughs> September, 28th. September, September, September 28th, 28th, five o'clock till whatever time we're Not done. There hmm? Not there, maybe shorter. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Any anything much. else on that uh, item? No? no? Sir. All right, thank you. Richard, just real quick. 20, what's the date in October for the budget? don't have my budget calendar with me. I believe I, I may have so. emailed you. Yes, and that at this time is estimated. Yeah, October, the 15th of October is that. Thank God. Your calendar is open. 
That's an ending off thing. I'll have you know October, again. October 15th. I can't change the legal date. Okay. All right. Moving forward. Thank um, you. Yeah. That's yeah. a Friday. Oh, that's a Friday. Okay. That's Saturday, right? Yeah. 15th. All right, moving on to item 11, it's a motion to concur with the mayor's appointments as follows. For the Community Development Authority, it's completing a four-year term expiring of 12 of 2019. Um, Kashao Yang Tao of, at 2551 East Fenway Drive. Um, I met with her a couple weeks ago. Great local resident, three children, attorney. Very, very interested in the future of this community. Strong interest to be involved. Perfect candidate for a, a committee or commission. So, if there's no questions, I need a motion on that appointment. Thanks, Mayor. As chair of the CD, I'd be happy to have a, a full contingent on board again. So, we'll, uh, with that, I'll make a motion to concur with the mayor's appointment as follows or as listed. Sorry. Guzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Spikavich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. All right, uh, slight shift in order. We're going to move 13 before 12. So um, under engineering, 13 is a consideration of resolution number 11733-090616, accepting the workmanship and authorizing final payment to Stark Pavement Corporation for project number 14019. This project involved the installation of street improvements in various locations citywide in various Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the closeout for the uh, 2015 uh, road and paving project. Uh, Stark Contractors uh, was the, the uh, prime contractor. Did a good job for us. Um, final payout amount is in percentage points of the awarded amount. Excellent. Good results this year? Yep. I saw that some of the streets in our neighborhood were... Uh, we're done. Yes. Questions? Not my streets, in case somebody asks. <laughs> they were done under warranty, if I remember right. Yeah, they were done under warranty. And that was a, a different contract than yeah, this, yeah, yeah. but yes. yeah. I just noticed they were done. And the residents are happy. Whenever, whenever you have happy residents, you want to talk about <laughs> Motion. Bill move to approve resolution 11733-090616. Accepting the workmanship and authorizing final payment to Stark Pavement Corporation for project number 14019. This project involved the installation of street improvements in various locations citywide. Is it Kelsey Kelsey? Okay. Roll call. Alderman Bikavich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. All right, moving uh, back to 12, it's a motion to approve the vendor summary report in the amount of $516,989.16. Finance Director, any Initial comments. Any questions or comments from the council? You raising your hand for a question or are you ra waving to the audience? I just waving. All right. <laughs> just saying hi. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's, again, that's what works. Even if they're from Frank. Good feedback to, oh, the, yeah, to the audience. All right. Um, motion on 12. He will move to approve the vendor summary report in the amount of $516,989.16. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Bukavich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Item 14 is a motion to enter into a contract with Traffic Analysis and Design, Inc. for a design of the signal signalization of West Drexel Avenue and South 10th Street. That's a heavily requested project, I would say, by residents. For a cost fee not to exceed $13,249.49, project number 14026, in the first and second district. Mike. Uh, back in October of 2015, uh, we had a traffic signal warrant analysis done, and the conclusion of that report was that uh, signals are warranted under current conditions. Uh, so, of course, the next step then is to actually go ahead with the, with the design, and, and that's what this is. We went out for uh, proposals. We did get two, um, and the recommendation is to go with Traffic Analysis and Design, Inc. They've done a lot of work for us uh, uh, over the years, but even more recently, they are uh, finishing up the Drexel overall study um, now, and I know they, they've done another one for us from Pennsylvania Avenue. We just received that the other day. So. 
lot of lot of familiarity. They do good work. They are sanctioned by the Department of Transportation. So, um, recommendation would be to accept their proposal. Um, quite a difference in the, in the prices that you can see: thirteen thousand and change uh, versus uh, thirty thousand. And we think there's some efficiencies with uh, all the data gathering that they've been doing on these other studies. And uh, I know I'll do it, but will agree this is a very request. Yeah, that. on behalf of the second district, thank you. Uh, it's great to see it moving ahead. Again, it is one of the busier intersections, and um, it's great to have all the development, but some of the unforeseen circumstances was the traffic that we encountered, not only with the exit and entrance ramp at Drexel, but the great development going on here. So um, it's high on the radar list, and uh, residents will be thankful. Yes, the administrator. The only point uh, to make to the council other than the uh, the intersection, uh, the engineering department's been looking at some of the options for surface improvements as well to Drexel. Um, I don't think that the surface is what it needs to be, you know, basically from 94 and uh, how also we're looking at what some of those options are. Uh, that's not going to be next year, but we're going to be seeing that as part of some of our street work, and we're looking at what, uh, what options we can have out there. Um, we need to, uh, I think, make some aesthetic improvements as well as writability improvements out there. So um, we'll let it count down for a little bit, but uh, we'll be back at it uh, probably within a couple years. Mayor? Alderman Krakowski? Um, on behalf of the 1st District, uh, we also are thankful to, for this. Uh, a quick trip has provided a great opportunity for uh, uh, you know, whatever because it's a great place. But uh, it has caused, uh, you know, significant traffic uh, congestion there, and the truck traffic coming in from the uh, from the from the north. So, it's uh, folks I've talked to who don't live in that area because mostly residential in Dan's area, but uh, they're very thankful that there's traffic lights soon to be installed there. All right. Anybody else? Motion. David shall make a motion to enter into a contract with Traffic Analysis and Design Inc. for the design and signalization. West Drexel Avenue and South 10th Street intersection project for for a cost fee not to exceed $13,249.49, project number 14026. Rukowski second. Roll call. Alderman Verhalen. Aye. Tolman. Aye. Kale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Bukavich. Aye. Aye. Item 15 is a Consideration of resolution number 11737-090616. It approves the Drexel, it would approve the Drexel Ridge, thank you, development agreement for the design and installation of public improvements at 2100, 2200, and this is a correction, it should say 2280 East Drexel Avenue and 7721 South Pennsylvania Avenue, tax key numbers as listed. Um, project number is 16051, and this is in the first, that's also correct. So as part of the development, um, there are, is some public infrastructure, and that includes uh, public water main and private sanitary sewer. And the reason that the private sanitary sewer is part of this development agreement is because of the <coughs> regulations that need to be followed during its construction. So um, strict adherence to design standards and then uh, on-site inspection during the work. So basically that's what this development agreement covers. Um, I have an uh, audience uh, comment form for Mr. Degner. Welcome. Arden Degner, 8540 South Pennsylvania Avenue. I've uh, mentioned this because, as you know, I just live a quarter of a mile south of it on Pennsylvania Avenue. But my reason for it is that I recall back in 1974, there was a fuel crisis and the, the secretary of the Oak Creek Franklin School District came and asked the council to provide walkways for the students. The council did. Now, here we have just a quarter of a mile or so north of where there is a crosswalk from Belmont Place to 
the other side of Pennsylvania Avenue. It just had to be put in last year or two to allow these students. And I've seen a dozen students on the east side of Pennsylvania Avenue from just those uh, uh, large uh, single family dwellings queuing up there waiting for a bus. Now we have this development with 645 parking spaces. I don't know how many there are in each uh, uh, in, in each uh, phase that's going in, but how are these students safely going to catch a school bus? I was talking to the uh, uh, at our school district annual meeting, but I was shut down because of, of uh, they, they, they set up a system that does not allow public input except at one spot, which I have questions. Can I just stop you for one second? I can't answer questions for the school district and how they satisfy their busing requirements for the students. What is your specific question to this item for us? The specific question is that I'm begging you to allow the school district an input so that they have safe student pickup at that. And, and of course, we, the, the, this should be actually be held until the, uh, the uh, public meeting, October 4th, which is what the school superintendent mentioned. He's going to try to look into this because just think, the students bottling up at, I would say, Drexel instead of the Pennsylvania Avenue. Hundreds or dozens of them in the first phase. And to keep them out of the way of, of these hundreds of cars that will be exiting that area in the early morning hours, you need fencing to protect them because Monkey shines will always go on, and and see that's what I am, I am. Not only that, but we need safe pickup for whatever number of of buses that are needed uh, eventually. All right, I will, and and I, will I pass. just beg of you to to make this a consideration. I will instead pass on of, your comments to the school district. On, on, we're always concerned about the safety. It's thank you. We just talked about an item related to that. Mayor. Yes, Alderman Kurkowski. For what it's worth, when this uh, item originally came up, uh, one of my homework uh, endeavors I did was to talk to other apartment complexes and specifically talked about students and uh, not knowing that this would come up. Um, first off, there were not hundreds or dozens of students in these complexes that were being picked up by the, uh, by the school buses. They were talking 6 to 12 students. But from what I gathered, there was uh, locations within the complexes that were provided for the school buses to pick them up in a safe manner. So um, I think, Mr. Degner, you should rest assured that when this is built, there's going to be a place for those students to stand safely and catch the buses. Thank you. All right. More specific questions? Alderman Tolman? Uh, <clears throat> what kind of timeline are, uh, is HI, HSI expecting on the buildings, the actual buildings? We have any idea? Yeah, the, the the buildings themselves would be built in seventeen. Uh, that would allow this would allow for the groundwork, so some of the utilities, what, what what have you, to be started this year. But the the buildings themselves, at least for the first phase, would be twenty seventeen. Okay. Other questions? Motion on fifteen. Kelsey, you make a resolution. Uh, make a motion to adopt resolution number one one seven three seven dash zero nine zero six one six. Approving the Drexel Ridge Development Agreement for the design and installation of public improvements at 2100, 2200, and 2280 East Drexel Avenue and 7721 South Pennsylvania Avenue, project, project number 16051. David Trill, second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Krakowski? Aye. Rukavich? Aye. Rahalen? No. And item 16 is consideration of resolution number 11738-090616, accepting dedication of the public improvements and release from the development agreement for the Scott CSM tax key number 864-9003, project number 05059 in the 4th District, Mike. Very small scale. Uh, development, just two residential lots at the, at the far south end of 11th Avenue. Uh, 9005 South 11th Avenue was constructed 
I would estimate probably 2007, and, and it became kind of a stalled um, project then. Uh, the owner at that time was on the several tours of duty uh, overseas. Um, <clears throat> it since returned um, and sold the property. So in, in the process of, of the closure, paperwork, everything, um, the new owners have satisfied the city's requirements. They, they uh, created the CSM. And uh, they provided the the grading as built that we had been asking for for a long time. So, uh, bottom line, this is finally closing out a small development that's been kind of hanging open for many years. Okay. Questions? There are two homes on there. I don't think that anything's been built on either of those lots yet. I may be wrong, but anything else? Motion on 16. I'm going to make a motion to adopt resolution number 11738, mm -hmm. a resolution accepting dedication of the public improvements and release from the development agreement for the Scott CSM project number 05059, tax key number 864-9003. Gail, second. Roll call. Alderman Gail. Yes. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bikavich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Coleman. Aye. <clears throat> Moving on, item 17 is consideration of resolution number 11739-090616, approving the Apple Tower Development Sanitary Development Agreement for the design and installation of public improvements at 8300, 8304, 8310, and 8400 South 27th Street. Tax key numbers as listed, project number 16052 in the 2nd District. Mike? This is for an extension of about 270 uh, feet of sanitary sewer that would cross uh, three properties connect to existing sanitary sewer system. Um, this is on 27th Street in the vicinity of uh, Colonial Woods uh, condominium, so at Forest Hill. And um, the property that uh, this sanitary sewer that would cross uh, would provide uh, sewer service uh, as they uh, currently are on uh, septic uh, tanks system. So. Um, all in all, a good thing, and we'll provide uh, sanitary service for further development in that area. All those properties that it's crossing are, I see, they're for sale now. So one's a single family home, the other one is a, like a two store small uh, commercial establishment. Water Questions? is there, Mike? Alderman Gale? Water is already there, yes. Uh, and there'll be no cost incurred to the property owners. It's all developer cost. That's correct. In remediations in paper here that be restituted. Anything in properties will be uh, restituted. I, I missed the question. I'm sorry, uh, Alderman. There's restoration within the agreement. I see. Oh, that yes. Property owners, everything will be put back the way it's found. Yes. Anybody right. else? Motion on 17. David will make a motion to adopt resolution number 11739090616, approving the Apple Tower <coughs> Development Sanitary Development Agreement for the design and installation of a public improvements at 8300, 8304, 8310, 8400 South 27th Street, tax key number 8310310000. Tax key number 831. Nine zero zero seven zero zero zero. Tax key number eight three one nine zero zero nine zero zero zero. And tax key number eight three one nine zero two six zero zero zero. Project number sixteen zero five two. Kowski second. Kowski seconds. Roll call. Alderman Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bukavich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gale. Aye. And last one, item 18 under engineering, is a consideration of resolution number 11740-090616, approving a temporary limited easement termination agreement by and between Basiris, Wisconsin Property, LLC, and the City of Oak Creek, tax key number 8733-9010, project number 12025 in the 1st District. Mike. This is uh, basically finalizing the, uh, the termination of the temporary limited easement. This is the easement that was needed uh, for the DOT's um, Howell Avenue project that they uh, took uh, on the last two years. Uh, basically, typically these uh, temporary limited easements, they just expire at the end of the 
uh, project and that would be the case here and and is the case here uh, property owner asked for this formal termination be accommodated city administrator so this uh, came up in terms of doing the due diligence and title search when we're doing the uh, various master lock Osiris uh, projects and uh, it's just a uh, an additional safety step from, from that perspective okay. anybody have any questions motion on 18 Rakowski would make a motion to adopt resolution number 11740-090616 approving the temporary limited easement termination agreement by and between Bosiris Wisconsin Property LLC and the City of Oak Creek project number 12025. David will second. David seconds. Roll call. Alderman Kirkowski. Aye. McCabich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Licensing is next and I'll hand off to Alderman Kirkowski. License committee met on August 16th. Recommendations are as follows, and you have minutes in your uh, your packet. Number 19, Kierkowski make a motion to deny an operator's license to Christopher Jankowski, 3393 South 99th Court, Milwaukee, for falsification by omission and being a habitual offender. Gail seconds. Gail seconds. Roll call. Alderman Bukiewicz. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kierkowski. Aye. 20. Kurkowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to Todd Calmerton, 7190 Houston Street, Greendale. The seconds. Gail yeah, seconds, roll call. Alderman Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bukiewicz. Aye. 21. Kurkowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to Rachel Arabalo, 1312 Lathrop Avenue, Racine. The seconds. <coughs> roll call. Alderman Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Bukiewicz? Aye. Verhalen? Aye. 22. Kurkowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to Natasha Wilson, 2400 71st Street, Kenosha. Seconds. Roll call. Alderman Gale? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Bukiewicz? Aye. Verhalen? Aye. Tillman? Aye. 23. Kurkowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to Crispin Ramirez, 3033A, South 8th Street, Milwaukee. No seconds. Roll call. Alderman Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bukiewicz. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. 24. Kurkowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to Edward Thickpen, 230 West Rainbow Ridge Drive, Oak Creek. No second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Bukiewicz. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. 25. Kowski will make a motion to grant an operator's license to the 15 individuals listed on the agenda. Favorable background reports received. No second. Roll call. Alderman Bukiewicz. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tolman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. six. Kowski will make a motion to grant a regular Class B combination alcohol license to Donna D. Abro Guy, Agent Frankie's Restaurant and Catering, LLC, DBA Frankie's Restaurant and Catering, 924 East Rawson Avenue, former Brian's Restaurant location with issuance subject to receipt of fees and departmental approvals. No seconds. Roll call. Alderman Verhalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bikavich. Aye. 27. Kowski make a motion to grant a regular Class B combination alcohol license to Phil Landa, Agent Alphagon Tacos and Beer Inc., DBA Alphagon Tacos and Tequila Bar, 8701 South Howell Avenue, with issuance subject to surrender of current reserve Class B combination license favorable departmental approvals received. No seconds. No call. Alderman Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Bukiewicz. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. And finally, item 28. Krakowski will make a motion to grant a temporary Class B beer license to Mark Zapp, agent on behalf of St. Matthew Parish, 9303 South Chicago Road, for St. Matthew's Fish Boils to be held on October 7, 2016, April 7, 2017, and May 19, 2017. No seconds. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. <clears throat> Aye. Krakowski. Aye. Mikhevich. Aye. Verhalen. Aye. Tomek. Aye. And under miscellaneous item 29 is a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes to discuss the following. A is section 19.851C to discuss the finalists for the position of city administrator. B, 
section 19.851E to consider a request from Emerald Row LLC for TIF loan and grant assistance for phase two of the Emerald Row development in the second district. And C, section 19.851E to consider a proposed assignment of tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement and consent to assignment with Bosiris Wisconsin Property LLC and Master Lock Company LLC and a first amendment to tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement for the property at 6744 South Hall Avenue, Bosiris Wisconsin Property LLC in the first district. Council President. We will move to convene in the closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statutes to discuss the following. A, section 19.85, sub 1, sub C, to discuss the finalists for the position of city administrator. B, section 19.85, sub 1, sub E, to dis consider a request from Emerald Road LLC for TIF loan and grant assistance for phase 2 of the Emerald Road development. C, section 19.85, sub 1, sub E, to consider a proposed Assignment of Tax Incremental District Number 10 Finance Development Agreement and Consent to Assignment with Poseidon Wisconsin Property LLC and Master Lock Company LLC in our First Amendment to Tax Incremental District Number 10 Finance Development Agreement for the property at 6744 South Hall Avenue, Poseidon Wisconsin Property LLC. Is it called scale second? Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Mikhevich. Aye. Rahalen. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. At this time, we'll go into closed session. Uh, we will return to live stream when we come back into open session. All right, we're back. Uh, Alderman Gale? No moves to recommit in open session. Is it Gale second? Okay. Roll call. Alderman Kukowski? Aye. Bikavich? Aye. Verhalen? Aye. Tolman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. So are we moving right to 32? All right, so item 32 is a consideration of resolution number 11741-090616, consenting to the assignment of tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement from Bosiris Wisconsin Property LLC to Master Lock Company LLC, and approving a first amendment to tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement, Bosiris Wisconsin Property LLC in the first district. Any questions or comments from the council? Motion. Kowski, make a motion to adopt resolution number 11741-090616, consenting to the assignment of tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement from Bosiris Wisconsin Property, LLC, to Master Lock Company, LLC, and approving a First Amendment to tax incremental district number 10 finance development agreement, Bosiris Wisconsin Property, LLC. David, you'll second. Roll call. Alderman Bikavich? Aye. Verhalen? Aye. Tolman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Motion to adjourn. Kirkowski will make a motion to adjourn. Kuzikowski will second. Roll call. Alderman Verhalen? Aye. Tolman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Kuzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Bikavich? Aye. Thank you for watching this live stream. We will see you next Tuesday at Plan Commission. Have a good night.